arms are my theme, and those matchless heroes who from Portugal's far western shores, by oceans where name had ventured, by oceans where none had ventured, voyaged to Taprobana and beyond, enduring hazards and assaults, such as drew on more than human prowess among far distant peoples to proclaim a new age and win undenying fame. Kings likewise of glorious memory who magnified Christ and empire, bringing ruin on the degenerate lands of Africa and Asia, and others whose immortal deeds have conquered death's oblivion. These words will go wherever there are men if art and invention seize my pen, if art and invention steer my pen. Boast no more about the subtle Greek or the long odyssey of Trojan Aeneas. Enough of the oriental conquests of great Alexander or of and of Trajan. I sing of the famous Portuguese to whom both Mars and Neptune bowed. Abandon all the ancient muse revered, a loftier code of honour has appeared. And you, nymphs of the Tages, who first suckled my infant genius, if ever in my rustic verses I celebrated your companionable river. Companionable river, return me now a loftier tone, a style both grand and contemporary. Be to me, Helican, let Apollo choose your waters as the fountain of my muse. Fire me now with mighty cadence, cadences, not a Gothard's querulous piping, but the shouts of a battle trumpet stirring the heart, stealing the countenance. Give me a poem worthy of the exploits of those heroes so inspired by Mars to propagate their deeds through space and time if poetry can rise to the sublime. And you, my boy king, guarantor of Portugal's ancient freedoms, an equal surety for the expansion of Christendom's small empire, you who have the most trembling, the marvel prophesied for our time, given to the world in God's eternal reign to win for God much of the world again. You tender and green sapling of that tree more precious to Christ than any other Western lineage, whether in the French or Roman line, witness your sculpture visibly stamped with the victory at Oric, when Christ bestowed as emblems to emboss the five wounds he suffered on the cross. You mighty king, on whose India, you mighty king, on whose India the newborn sun directs his first beam, shines on your palace in mid-hemisphere and casts his last ray on the Brazils. You to whom we look to yoke and humble Arabia's wild horsemen, infidel Turks and India's sons and daughters, who yet drink the Ganges' sacred waters. This is Kamosh starts with a great sailing from Portugal and this is where I will end this reading. This is just the first canto, just not even two pages complete. But I hope that you enjoyed and thank you for sharing. This is a wild classic written in 16th century about Ganges and the kings of India and sons and daughters. Overwhelming, right? <laughs>